Good morning everybody respected chairpersons moderator and the distinguished uh, delegates and uh, RSSDA president Dr Makar sir good morning everybody i thank the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to speak in this prestigious international conference my topic for today is a focus on women and diabetes there is no conflict of interest my flow of presentation will be epidemiology of diabetes in women how diabetes mellitus in women is different what are all the practical problems in type 1 diabetic girls why there is increased cardiovascular risk in women with diabetes is there a relation between pcos and diabetes what are the other medical disorders to be considered in diabetic women what is the future of gestational diabetes and take home messages we know that globally in 2021 537 million people are suffering with diabetes according to the latest idf atlas and the expected number will be 783 million by 2045 and 318 million ahead igt and 2040 the number will be 481 million why we are concerned is 200 million women are suffering with diabetes mellitus globally and the expected number by 2040 will be 313 million 21 million of live births to men in 2021 had hyperglycemia in pregnancy the global prevalence of gdm is 14.7% and in asia the prevalence is 11.5 in southeast asia every fourth woman has hyperglycemia in pregnancy women are 10 times more likely to develop cardiovascular diseases diabetes diabetes is the ninth leading cause of death in women globally And in India, one in ten women are living with diabetes. Two out of five are in reproductive age. Two to five percent of all pregnancies develop GDM. One in six births are linked to complications, and GDM has higher prevalence in urban areas. Various studies have given the various numbers. Why are women more prone to diabetes? This is a puzzling question to many of us, and the. only one message we can say is the estrogen receptors alpha and beta are involved in the regulation of the expression of the genes influencing the insulin resistance and glucose homeostasis women with the early onset of type 2 diabetes had higher mortality and disability adjusted life years than men at the age less than 30 years except in the countries with low socio demographic index higher body mass index contributed to early onset of type 2 diabetes and slightly increased tendency in women so what does this study add is since 1990 the age standardized incident rate and age standardized daily rate for the burden of early onset of type 2 diabetes in adolescents and young adults have substantially increased globally countries with low middle and middle socio demographic index and women aged less than 30 years are particularly affected weight control is essential in reducing the burden of the early onset of type 2 diabetes but countries should establish specific roles to deal with this problem effectively why diabetes is special because it affects it differently in different age groups either in children or adults and girls reproductive age middle age elderly women and the common predisposing factors are obesity metabolic syndrome insulin resistance and pcos does it differ between the women and men a metabolic syndrome a significant sex disparity has been there the factors contributing are overeating decreased physical activity cultural expectations educational and economic status hormonal and genetic factors it represents the interplay between the nature and nurture so type 1 diabetes mellitus in women type 1 diabetes is the only common autoimmune disease not characterized by the female preponderance the pubertal period is associated with reduced incidence in type 1 diabetes in girls who maintain stronger residual beta cell function than boys this suggests that female gonadal hormones transiently protect against the type 1 diabetes and in general young adolescents with reduced serum estrogen activity develop this form of the disease i am not going in detail about the pathophysiology and everything but there are some specific problems which we have to consider in type 1 diabetic girls the age of menarche either early or delay is a problem associated thyroid dysfunction hyper and hypothyroidism urogenital infections in young girls is a main cause of concern and retinopathy hyperglycemic emergencies and nutritional aspects in various socio economic strata is an important thing to be considered education employment marriage fertility issues divorce diversion depression and anxiety because pregnancy worsens retinopathy neuropathy and pre existing kidney disease why there is increased cardiovascular disease in women with diabetes what they have seen observed is 
in women increased vulnerability to hypertension and dyslipidemia increased prevalence of abdominal obesity atherogenic dyslipidemia hypercoagulability oxidative stress and there are sex differences in the endothelial dysfunction impaired response to estrogens and increase in androgens and more socio economically disparities in treatment and differences in treatment response also we have seen that diabetes and hypertension there is a deadly duo combination more so in women and we have to take care of the anti hypertensive medications particularly in type 1 diabetic or diabetic women who are planning for the pregnancy diabetic dyslipidemia higher triglyceride values are there lower hdl and lower apo a1 higher apo ab and greater decrease in the ldl size and predominant of ldl b pattern in females heart failure again is a very big topic and diabetic cardiomyopathy is also very common particularly in elderly women when you are using thiazolidine diones or metformin or insulin hglt2 inhibitors take consideration of other comorbidities also sex specific differential in risk of diabetes related macrovascular outcomes summarizes results from longitudinal studies that examine sex differences in risk factors for and rates of microvascular complications from diabetes women with diabetes have 44% greater risk of incident of cad's and 27% risk of incident stroke compared to men clustering of hypertension obesity increased triglycerides possible contribution of hormonal differences sex differences in the prescription of an adherence to the pharmacological treatment so diabetes is associated with higher risk of cad and cvd in women compared to men so there is a new trio everybody is worrying about the pandemic of diabetes obesity diabetes and pcos does obesity is causing the pcos or does pcos is causing the diabetes or pcos is causing the obesity so there is a cluster of hyperandrogenism ovulatory dysfunction polycystic ovaries and we have various pcos phenotypes like complete which we see in 19% of population hyperandrogenism ovulatory dysfunction and pcos the classic variety of pcos is in 26% of population where hyperandrogenism and ovulatory dysfunction 35% will have non ovulatory and 20% will have non androgenic so this is a very important thing which we have to consider because there is a vicious cycle between the hyperandrogenism and insulin resistance and truncal obesity excess truncal fat augments the insulin androgen cycle we have two shapes of obesity everybody knows pear shaped and apple shaped pear shaped what we say is a cardioprotective but apple shaped obesity dysfunctional adipocytes increased lipolysis increased macrophage infiltration inflammation insulin resistance pcos was more associated with patients with excess upper body fat this is one important thing which we have to consider now everybody are thinking about the gut microbiota is there is a clinical correlation or a critical correlation between the pcos and type 2 diabetes common pathogenic mechanism is insulin resistance obesity inflammation mitochondrial dysfunction and this gut microbiota what they have been observed is dysbiosis of the gut microbiota endotoxemia and short chain fatty acids biotransformation of bile acids synthesis of amino acids and what they have seen is the gut microbiota alterations play a central role in the pcos and type 2 diabetes and treatment can be achieved by regulating the gut microbiota either by probiotics or fmt or a bariatric surgery or dietary interventions and drug treatment so the other common thing what we see in the diabetic women is the infections various infections are very common urinary tract infection genital infections foot infections because of sglt2 inhibitors increased risk of urogenital infections foot infections specifically because of our toe ring and anklet injuries periodontal infections the most neglected part and the skin infections various varieties we see in our regular practice other medical disorders what we have to consider is the bone health it's a very significant because advanced glycation end products accumulation increases the osteoclast chronic hyperglycemia decreases the bone mineral density vitamin d stimulates the expression of the insulin receptors and we should have the caution of usage of thiazolidine diones nephropathy estrogen is protective against nephropathy estrogen inhibits the ras system nitric oxide is increased by the estrogen and metformin usage we have to be careful retinopathy worsening of retinopathy in pregnancy and proliferative retinopathy thyroid dysfunction neuropathy women with neuropathy are at risk of 
pregnancy related complications like hyperemesis, gastroparesis, hyperglycemia, unawareness, orthostatic hypertension, syncope, urinary retention are very common. Cardiovascular adjustments to pregnancy may be impaired in women with diabetic neuropathy, B12 deficiency with metformin usage, sleep disturbances, OSA, dementia is very very common. Cognitive dysfunction is also a very important thing. Risk of cerebrovascular accidents is more in diabetic women. Other common diseases is the anemia. Obesity decreases the iron release. Erythropoietin deficiency is also common. B12 deficiency is common. Thyroid disorders are related to the anemia and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Autoimmune diseases, depression, menopause, HRT, sexual health, risk of cancers. These are all the things which we have to consider for a diabetic woman because we see increased risk of CA, breast, ovary, endometrium, pancreas, kidney, colon, liver. I want to emphasize only one important thing which is affecting the regular life of a diabetic woman is the screen time and digital time it's more injurious than smoking alcohol and drug abuse which we have to consider in the preventive care so i'm not going in detail about the gdm so one important thing is pre-gestational diabetes cases are increasing rather than the gestational diabetes type 1 type 2 diabetic becoming pregnant pre-existing diabetic now the new another concept which we have to consider is the gestational glucose intolerance another new term transgenerational transmission gestational programming because in the pathophysiology of gdm we have the new varieties of pathophysiological changes which we have to consider Fetal handling of the maternal glucose, fetal glucose steel phenomena are very important because increased glycemia, increased insulinemia, low-grade chronic inflammation, increased oxidative stress influence the intrauterine in, uh, environment resulting in diabetic embryopathy. We see that. We see many anatomical malformations, neurogenerative disorders and delayed neurocognitive development. So maternal obesity, gestational weight gain, in utero overnutrition, epigenetic changes, altered physiology, increased risk of obesity, diabetes, CBD in offspring, intergenerational effects we have to consider because dysregulation of long non-coding RNA is happening. So early life conditioning in utero is very, very important to prevent the metabolic diseases in future. So various articles substantiate this, the weight gain, adverse pregnancy outcomes and future metabolic syndrome. And the another new topic is the early gestational diabetes mellitus. There is a systematic reviews which we have to consider. And uh, this is a very important uh, because heterogeneity in the prevalence of early gestational diabetes Intrapartum, postpartum, ill effects of the mother and offspring we have to see. So what is the future? Future is we have to think of the NCD risk. Women and diabetes is not only the gestational diabetes. Women and diabetes is not only the reproductive age. We have to consider the NCD risk in the mother, in the first offspring. We have to... Uh, track the trajectory because diabetes in girls and women have unique challenges, gender specific roles and social and economic inequalities exposing them to pure nutrition and physical inactivity. In developing countries, women face multiple barriers in accessing cost effective diabetes mellitus prevention programs. Female gender is key to diabetes prevention. Gestational diabetes is mother of all non-communicable diseases. Universal screening of GDM is possible with all other criteria what we can do. So, Women make up to more than half the population, yet clinical trials don't often reflect that. More studies on women and sex differences are needed. Women tend to have various contributing risk factors with strong associations to diabetes, but still remain underrepresented population. Women with diabetes get treated less acutely than men. Need for an action to personalize treatment and make policies which provides a holistic care for the female fraternity. Being a woman who has diabetes can pose a challenge, but with our support, she can meet the challenge. So, prevention of diabetes starts from in utero, and we have to focus on the fetus for the future generations. So, we what we have to do is we have to request all the prestigious associations like RSSDA and Diabetes India. We have the definite specific, age specific, gender specific guidelines and regulations to modify and to modulate the treatment practical problems, particularly not only the type 1 diabetic children, but elderly diabetic women, particularly in the elderly age, geriatric age and menopause. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and for your patient hearing.